In this video, we will be checking out the latest addition to the EcoChatis menu, which is an eco-farmed high mountain oolong tea. We're here today to introduce a new tea on our menu. It's an eco-farmed high mountain oolong tea from the very southern borders of Nanto County in the Yushan high mountain uh, tea growing region. Yushan uh, translates as Jade Mountain, which is the highest uh, peak not only in Taiwan but in all of East Asia. It's 3,983 meters, I believe. And uh, at the trailhead to this uh, peak is Dongpu, uh, where there is an Aboriginal village, the Bunun tribe. And our friends are from this village and have an organic tea farm there. Uh, we've been getting to know them uh, over the last few years and have gotten to know them particularly well in the last six months or so, especially because we are doing a documentary on their lives as organic tea farmers and how they came to be organic tea farmers growing up in this remote mountainous region as uh, aboriginals here in Taiwan. So we'll have that story for you uh, in the near future. But um, primarily we've gotten to know them because uh, of their tea. Um, the husband of this family built the hot spring that is my favorite place to go in terms of a remote mountain hot spring. And I've been frequenting uh, that hot spring for a good 20 years now. And uh, I guess about three years ago, his younger brother, uh, I started having a chat about tea and he said, he, you know, my brother uh, has, this is his tea farm right over here and it's certified organic. He gave me a bag of tea and uh, basically that's where the story began. And we've been sharing their tea. Uh, we shared their tea twice with the Eco Cha Tea Club. Once, uh, I believe it was last January, uh, batch number 51. And um, again in October of 2020, uh, batch number 59. And this batch is the same batch as that uh, batch number 59 that we shared in October. It's a harvest that happened on September 3rd, 2020. Uh, the growth, the leaf growth, uh, was left to continue growing after the spring harvest. They call that the Ouyang, or basically uh, just keep growing. Uh, and so the leaves, in other words, the tea trees were not trimmed or pruned at all after following the spring harvest and allowed to grow, uh, which uh, inevitably creates some discrepancy in the maturity of the leaves. They're, they grew for three months or probably four months. And so the, the new growth was something like this high and just the top 10 centimeters or so, uh, four inches were taken. Uh, that's the new growth. Each tree and each branch uh, is different at that point. They're really good, kind of just doing their own thing. It's not this new, even growth. The whole point of uh, pruning is that you get a much more uh, even new growth that's easier to pick, and it's also kind of the same stock, so to speak. It has the same level of maturity, the same thickness, uh, more or less. I mean, relatively uh, the same level of maturity. Um, so uh, these kind of crops are interesting, but they're also difficult to process because the leaves are varied. Uh, you have some very young leaves along with some very old leaves, basically. And, but the leaves have a substance that's different. They're, they're just more natural in their growth stage and, and the way they grew when, it's, when the branches have grown this much and you're just taking the top of that new shoot off. It's a different stock. And uh, we were impressed with it the first time and we shared it with the tea club. And then we went back and just curiously asked, is there still any left of this? And they said yes. And we decided to procure the remainder of the stock and actually begin starting to represent this farm on an ongoing basis. And that's what we're doing here today, kicking off the uh, launch of this new tea. I need to take another sip. <clears throat> 
It's really soothing and satisfying. I did uh, 10 grams of leaf in 150 milliliter pot, roughly one minute brews. I'm on brew five right now. Uh, I have brew one through four in this cup mixed together. I obviously tasted one, two, three, and four as they were going, uh, but this gives me a, a, an opportunity to have experience it and talk about it. And I also like to drink tea after it's cooled down uh, when I'm looking to get a real sense of its composition and con constituency. I'm not getting as much of the aromatics that I got when the tea was hot and the aromatic oils were volatile, but I'm getting a much more um, settled kind of uh, overall palate. And it's, it's, uh, it's balanced, it's soft, it's thick, uh, has a nice thick mouthfeel, and it's slightly pastry and honey-esque. These leaves have been uh, bug-bitten, at least a significant amount of them have. And uh, that has uh, become apparent in the uh, final product. <clears throat> what does that mean, bug bitten? Basically, in the briefest sense, uh, these tiny little flying insects called the Lu Yetan, or green leaf hopper, um, uh, feed on the new growth of the leaves, and that scars them, and it creates an immune system in uh, immune system response in the plants that releases a kind uh, its own. Uh, chemical compounds that is meant to attract another insect that will eat the green leaf hopper. So the tea plants are that smart and they're saying, oh, the green leaf hoppers are here. We need to call in these guys to uh, not get too affected by it. That's the, ult uh, the ultimate wisdom of nature in effect. I left this sixth pow or sixth brew. It's got to be 20 minutes. I left it as I was setting up uh, to shoot here. So we're going to see how that goes. Um, and in the meantime, I'll take out the tea leaves. That's just slightly more roasted in character, very light roast still. There's not really any toastedness there. There's just like a delicate scone character combined with this honey-esque uh, flavor. Some green in there, a very deep kind of spicy mustard green or something, or curry. I feel like sometimes I'm tasting uh, a type of fresh curry. Okay, I'm gonna go for the 20 minute sixth infusion. Wow, the nose. It's just so much in the nose. It's floral. Something like savory or spices, warming spices like curry, turmeric. That's very difficult to describe. It's got bite, but it brewed for 20 minutes and it's not uh, it's overly bitter. And the fragrance is like all the way up into my my forehead. <laughs> That's amazing. The brood leaves look actually uh, fairly even. Um, I don't see any or feel any very overly mature leaves. So uh, I was there when this harvest happened that day and they brought in a crew of, if I may, old ladies, locals uh, that have been picking tea for 30, 40 years and they did it right. And this is somewhat of an anomaly. Uh, uh, they were also told, you know, this is organic tea. Please be a little bit more careful. Don't, when it's commercial grown tea, there's much more evenness in the stock. You can take a little bit more mature leaves and they're still tender. But these leaves, having given the story I just said, grown for three months, they needed to be picked with care. And the, the amount of growth per plant is much less. So you really got to look for the new growth. But I think they did a really good job. Um, these, the stems were not removed and there's no major stem growth in here. So they basically just didn't pick anything that shouldn't have been picked. They didn't pick anything that was too old. So in that respect, the, the tea makers were happy and were able to achieve a, a quality that they were aiming for. We really love it. And this source 
Well, you'll hear about it more in the documentary, but it's a beautiful story. It's and it's an incredibly pristine environment. They're right up in a very uh, small and remote valley, right on the edge of the national park. We're really in the mountains there. I'm gonna taste this before I finish up. It's nice to go back to after that power hit. Very, very thick, very balanced. Honey, God, the soup is amazing. That's the this farm uh, and the produce that comes from it. It's a gem, and we're really, really happy to represent this kind of uh, tea culture. Uh, it's one of the most beautiful uh, sources of tea that we've found in, its, in all the factors combined, including how the tea tastes. Savory, curry, nutmeg, it's got all that kind of and super balanced. That's why it's so hard to pull out one flavor. And if I think about it hard enough, I can imagine something like Swiss chard, that kind of dark green leafy. It's all we want in a organic. Uh, I didn't mention our name, eco, uh, the name that we uh, coined Eco Farmed is to represent tea that is sourced from certified organic farms, but we're not representing the actual certification. But the produce is uh, certified organic. And uh, we call those uh, teas on our menu Eco Farmed. So check it out on our uh, product page. Go to ecochad.com, click on Eco Farmed Teas, and you will see this one with a red flag because it's new on the menu. If you haven't already, uh, please uh, click like and uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and share this video with anyone that you think might enjoy hearing about this kind of stuff. Thanks again. See you next time.